Okay, let's take a look at 7.4 and 7.5. Solving trig equations. So these are actually really easy. So when I see solve, that means my goal is to isolate the variable. So in this case, that would be theta. So let me think about the unit circle. Okay, I'm looking for where is sine theta equal to a half. So that'd be pi 6 and 5 pi 6. But actually, I mean, I guess I could keep on going around the circle, right? So 13 pi 6. Would that one be 17 pi 6? I could even come up with some negative values, right? So I actually could come up with infinitely many solutions depending on, you know, how many times I go around the circle and in which direction. So how can I write out all solutions then? So let me see if I can figure this out. So I'm going to start with the first point. That would be the pi sixths. OK, so that accounts for this guy. Now, what if I say plus multiples of 2 pi? Or in other words, plus 2 pi k. So that means every time I go around the circle, now k can be positive or negative. So every time I go around the circle in either direction, a full circle, I'm going to get all occurrences of that point. OK, so let me do the same thing for the other point. So that's going to account for all the occurrences of this point, because I'm including every time I go around the circle clockwise or counterclockwise and arrive back at the same point. So remember here, we've used this notation before. I have to say somewhere here, k is an integer. k is a whole number. Otherwise, k could be like a fraction, and I wouldn't make it all the way around the circle. So. If you remember, you could write that if you wanted to. Or there was the shorthand. We said k belongs to the set of integers. Okay, so if the problem just says solve, I'm actually done. So I've written out all solutions. So with these, we have to kind of look at the instructions. So sometimes it'll, it'll say something in the instructions like list some number of specific solutions. So I don't know. Let me just list a few of those. So there are the first two, the easiest ones. Okay, now every time I add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi to either of these, I'm going to have another solution. So 2 pi is 12 pi 6, right? So let's see, I'd have 13 pi 6, 17 pi 6, I guess 25 pi 6, 29 pi 6. I could subtract my 12 6, so negative 11 6. Negative 7 six, etc. right? So that just depends on the instructions. I think some of the ones on our worksheet said find like eight specific solutions or something like that. Okay, so there are those. Here's another one. So I start out with my unit circle. I'm looking for where cosine is root two over two. Okay, so there are the two points that I have to account for. Now, actually, for this one, I think I could do this in one equation, couldn't I? Couldn't I say something like that? Because 
here's positive pi force, here's negative pi force. And then each time I go all the way around the circle, I'm gonna be back at those same terminal points. Don't forget to say somewhere here, K is an integer. So again, when I write this, if the problem just says solve, I found all solutions because I've accounted for all the multiples of 2 pi, <clears throat> all of the occurrences of those two points. So if I wanted, again, some number of specific solutions, okay, well, guess pi fourths, negative pi fourths. And then with this one, I'd be adding and subtracting two pi, so eight pi fourths. So I guess I'd have nine pi fourths, seven pi fourths, add another eight fourths, so what's that, 17 pi fourths, 15 pi fourths, then I could also subtract. And again, <clears throat> I could find infinitely many of these, and that just depends on what the instructions ask for. Here's another one, very similar, except here I actually don't have a special value of cosine. So I'm gonna start this out the same way. I'm gonna kinda estimate, okay, there are gonna be two points on the circle where cosine is negative 0.2, here and here. Now, to get this first angle, couldn't I enter into the calculator inverse cosine of negative 0.2? <clears throat> because remember, the range of inverse cosine was the top half of the circle, right? So that's going to give me that angle that's in the top half of the circle. So if I just add my 2 pi k in there, I'm actually going to have all the occurrences of this first point here. Now actually, wouldn't this second point just be the same angle but negative? So couldn't I do this one very similar to how I did the last one? And just stick a plus or minus in front? Somewhere here, say k is an integer. Then I've accounted for all solutions. Okay, so for this one, I don't think it would be very interesting to find specific solutions since I'm not using a calculator. I could do that on the calculator by finding the inverse cosine of negative 0.2, but I won't bother. <clears throat> Here's one with tangent. Okay, so I have to remember where tangent was root 3 over 3. That was at pi 6, right? And then remember the period of tangent? The period of tangent was pi, right? So here's the other spot where tangent is root 3 over 3 because here at 7 pi 6, the x and y were both negative versus at positive pi 6, they were both positive. So either way, when I divide the y by the x, I actually get a positive value for tangent. Okay, so how to write out the solutions. 
Well, for this one, can't I do just one equation? Because actually this time, if I start at pi six, every time I go a distance of pi here, I'm gonna encounter another solution. So actually, because those points are diagonally separated, I can use the multiple of pi here rather than the multiple of two pi. I can actually count for all solutions in just one equation. Should I list some specific solutions? Okay, so pi 6. Now this time I'm adding or subtracting pi, so that's 6 6, right? So there's 7 pi 6. You can see that lands in the correct spot. So what would the next one be? 13 6. And then what, uh, 19 pi 6? Then I could subtract. So negative 5 pi 6. Negative 11 pi 6, etc. right? And I could find as many of those as the instructions asked for. How about number five? So I'm going to start by isolating the trig function. Don't forget the plus or minus here. Rationalize the denominator. Okay. So actually this time, because of the plus or minus, I actually have to account for four different points. So I can actually think of a few ways to write out all solutions for this guy. So what are some ideas? Well, let's see, if I start with pi fourths, that's this one. Uh, okay, well then I guess I could do something like I could add pi k. That would give me, you know, this point and this point. Then I could do, you know, another equation with negative pi fourths plus pi k. That would give me this guy and this guy, right? But I guess I could be more concise then, couldn't I? And I could actually combine these into one equation and use my plus or minus again. Okay, I'll let you think about the specific solutions on your own. Um, this one's kind of a special case. I mean, if you wanted to, it turns out that each of these points is actually equally spaced. Okay, you see how it happens that each of those points is a distance pi over two. So you see how each of these happens to be spaced pi over two. So actually, if I wanted to in this one, I could write the solution like so. Okay, but again, that's kind of a special case because those points do happen to be equally spaced. So I think in the back of the book, they're gonna have it written like this, but if you want to, you could write it as the, the bottom equation instead. All 
right, so I'm looking at something like number six. And the first thing I see about that one is it really looks like a quadratic equation to me. So I'm kind of thinking of a substitution. Like, doesn't that look like a 2u squared minus a 7u plus a 3 equals 0? So this guy, to me, looks quadratic. So I think in that case, then I'm going to want to factor that guy, right? Something like that. Let's see, you need a 3 and a 1. Is it negative and negative? Let's see, that'd be 2u squared minus 6 minus 1 is minus 7 plus 3. Looks like it. So if you wanted to, I mean, you could really factor this just in cosine. Depends on if you find the u substitution helpful or not. So either way, I mean, you arrive back here, right? So really what we're saying here then is that either cosine of x is a half or cosine of x is 3. Now cosine of x is not 3, right? Because that quantity is more than 1. It's impossible. So it must be true that cosine of x is a half. So then same as before. Not a very nice circle, but there are my two points, okay? So if I'm going to write out all solutions, how about something like plus or minus pi thirds plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer? Let's make sure I counted for everything. So here's positive pi thirds plus 2 pi k. Here's negative pi thirds plus 2 pi k. Okay, so again, I'll let you do specific solutions on your own if the question also asks for that. Okay, so here's some kind of special equations, as in with number seven, when I first look at that, the first thing I notice is I see this double angle. So I'm thinking right away of that formula for sine of 2x. Remember, for sine of 2x, there was only one double angle formula, right? That one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do oops, blue, is go ahead and write in, replace sine of 2x using the appropriate double angle formula. Okay, so what is this? Let's see, I can factor out a GCF. Let's see, therefore, that leave me with a two sine of X minus a 1. Sure I got that right. That'd give me my 10 sine x cosine x. That'd give me my minus 5 cosine x. That looks good. Okay, so then this guy says 5 cosine x is 0 or cosine x is 0. This guy says sine of x is 1 half. Okay, now let me refer to my circle. Okay, so cosine is 0. Let's see, here, here. Sine is a half, here and here. So I've got to account for all of these four points. <clears throat> okay, so some options for how to do that. Start with that one. 
So that's pi 6, right? Now you see how there's not anything diagonally across from that one that I want to account for? So that means with that equation, I have to use 2 pi k, not pi k. Same idea with this one here. See how there's not something diagonally across from that one? So that one, my 5 pi 6, I'm going to need a 2 pi k as well, not a pi k. Okay, what about this guy? These two are directly across the circle from each other diagonally. So what if I do pi halves plus pi k? That means I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to go halfway around the circle. I'm going to get all instances of those two points. And somewhere here, remember to say k is an integer. I don't know, should I find a few specific solutions? Okay, I can start with pi 6. I'm adding 12 pi 6, so 13, 25. So that's using that equation. Let me look at that one. 5 pi 6, again I'm adding 12 6, 17 6, 29 6, what about this equation? Starting with pi halves, adding 2 halves, so 3 pi halves, 5 pi halves, 7 pi halves, of course I could subtract. Again, I can find as many of those as the problems uh, instructions ask for. What about number eight? So number eight kind of looks like one of those quadratics, except that notice with that one, see how I've got different trig functions, left side and right side? So the first thing I think of is, well, maybe I'll write this guy first my fundamental identity, right? So couldn't I replace cosine squared? One minus sine squared. That way I have the same trig function on both sides. Then let's see if we can make this look like a quadratic in sign. See if that would be right. Two sine squared. Uh, let's see. Oh no, it wouldn't be, would it? That'd be a four. So I don't think I want a two, do I? I want a one, huh? Let's try this again. Two sine squared plus two sine minus sine minus one. Okay. I think I got. 
got it then. So then sine is a half or sine is negative one. There, there, and there. Looks like I'll need three equations, huh? Because nothing is diagonally separated. This one I could do negative pi halves or three pi halves. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> I won't bother with specific solutions for that one. Let you do that on your own. How about something like this? So first thing I see with this guy is that double angle. Okay, now I know for cosine of two X, actually have three formulas, right? But looking at the right side here, I think I would choose this formula because that's the formula that has only cosine in it. <clears throat> so I think that would be the simplest choice. Should I combine the like terms? Look like that. Now, haven't I done this one? I think this is exactly the same from here as, let me look up here. Which one was that? It was this one, wasn't it? From here, it's exactly the same as number five. So now from here, I'm gonna say C number five that we already completed, All right? And you can write out the solutions from there. It's exactly the same. Here's one where I don't have a double angle. I have something else. Let me start by isolating the trig function. Okay, this seems very easy, right? Well, where is sine of something equal to one? Well, that would be at pi halves plus two pi k, right? Except that it's not x in here. It's actually three x, right? 
So then to finish this off, I have to divide both sides by three. So there are all solutions. Okay, then sometimes we ask for some number of specific solutions. Sometimes we ask for, what if I ask this time for something like specific solutions in the interval 0 to 2 to 5. Okay, so then let's see. I should have put this down here, I think. Let's see if I can move this over. Try this again. Okay, so my first solution would be, well, pi 6. But then to get the next one, I have to add 2 pi thirds, right? So let me see, what is 2 pi thirds? I multiply it by 2 over 2, right? It's 4 pi 6. So I'd actually have here 5 pi sixths. Okay, then from there I would add another 4 pi six. So that one's 9 pi six, which reduces to 3 pi halves. What if I add another 4 pi six? So what would that one be? 13 pi six? Okay, this one though, this is actually more than 2 pi. So actually I'm no longer in this interval. So that guy's no good. So let's see, what are my solutions then? I guess I've got pi 6, 5 pi 6, and 3 pi halves. So those are my three specific solutions in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Okay, this is similar. Let's start by isolating the trig function. Rationalize. And then I think we did one really similar to this above. So let's see, looks like my solutions are pi six plus two, uh, wait a second, I think I have a mistake here, don't I? On my circle, should be here and here. Huh. So I have pi six plus pi k. But then again, that's not theta, it's theta over two. I'm looking at this, right? So then here I actually have to multiply by two. So actually my solution set would look like this, right? For all solutions. What if this one asks for specific solutions in 0 to 2 pi? Well, I'd have pi thirds, but actually no more, right? Because if I was to add that next increment of 2 pi, I would have exceeded 2 pi. So this one, I'd only have one specific solution in that set. Yeah, 
And finally, I think this is the last one. This problem is a little different. This is kind of like an application problem. So with this guy, I have the functions f of x is sine x, g of x is cosine x. So I've actually already graphed these. Okay, so I have to find the x values where f and g intersect. In other words, where is f of x equal to g of x? Okay, so let me set the two functions equal then. Okay, how do I solve this? Well, I wonder if I try dividing both sides by cosine. Tangent x equals 1. Oh, let me see. I know how to solve that. Wouldn't that be pi fourths plus pi k? Where k is an integer? Okay, so I found all x values where f and g intersect. Let me kind of look at the graph here. So let me see, where the heck do these things intersect? Oh, look, here. Oh, it looks like pi fourths. Where do they intersect again? Here. That'd be pi fourths plus four fourths, five pi fourths. Looks about right. Here. Looks like negative three pi fourths. Negative seven pi fourths. Okay, cool. And then I have, you know, more and more more intersection points, right? Because every time I add that multiple of pi in there, I'm going to get another one. Okay, so, so the only difference between question one and two is, in question one, I found all the x values where f and g intersect. So the difference is, in number two, I have to find the points. Let me add something to the instructions here. Let me say find all intersection points of f of x and g of x. Let me say specifically in the interval 0 to 2 pi. So that means that, let me see. So what are my x's in that interval? Let's look back up here at the graph for a second. It's going to be this one and this one, right? So in 0 to 2 pi, I have pi fourths and five pi fours for my x values. But if I want points, that means I have to get the corresponding y values. Okay, so what if I take these and I should be able to plug these x's into either f or g, right? So if I plug pi fourths in f, let's see, sine of pi fourths, I get root 2 over 2. What if I was to plug that in g instead? Oh, cosine of pi fourths is also root 2 over 2, so that's correct. Let me look at 5 pi fourths. Either function see, 5 pi fourths here. It's going to be negative root 2 over 2. So there are my intersection points. So that means if you look up here at the graph, oops, if I was to actually label that point, that would be pi fourths, comma, root two over two. This one would be three pi fourths, negative root two over two. 
looks correct. And one more question. Find all x values in 0 to 2 pi where the slope of the tangent line to f of x is horizontal. Let me see, which one is f of x? f of x was sine of x. Okay, so I'm looking at the graphs. Mm, should I clean this up a little bit? So let me get rid of G. So, looking at the f of x function, so the tangent line. So if I'm moving along that graph, here's the tangent line. Tangent line would be increasing, increasing, increasing. Oh, here, horizontal. So here, then it'd be decreasing, 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 decreasing. Leveling out, there'd be horizontal again. Increasing, increasing, increasing. Oh, leveling out, horizontal. Decreasing, 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 horizontal. Okay, so I need to find, need to list those x values. Not too bad. So let me see what those would be. Looks like, oh, in 0 to 2 pi, it says. So I guess it would only be this one and this one then. Um, so it looks like, what is that, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2? 